let's see here. Uh, ring modulation. Who remembers uh, what we were combining in ring modulation? Oh, oh Bree, you were up here. Do you remember ring modulation from Monday or whatever? Um. We were combining what two sources? It is too, a good question. Anybody remember? <laughs> yeah, Eric? So E4, F3, and A13. Yeah, so E3, uh, yeah, d d you were combining E3, which would be oscillator 1. So oscillator 1, E3. There you are. Okay, what was the other one? F3. F3 which is actually F4, yes. That's oscillator 2. So what you're doing right now is you're taking these outputs, oscillator 1 and oscillator 2, and you're sending them into the ring mod, OK? The way you can kind of read the routing on this, so we, I've, I've used the kind of handy you know, uh, battleship notation, right, where we're just using a letter and a number. But if you want to know where you're routing things, this is what you're sending, and this is where it's going across the top. So we're sending oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 into ring mod A and B input, OK? Now, we're not hearing anything because we're not hearing uh, the output from ring modulation. The reverberator is now sent to the output here. So this, we're sending reverberation to output 1 and 2. If we go ahead and move those two pins up one row, that OK, so now change those. OK. So this one's pretty low. Lovely. Some nice timbral effects by combining two oscillators, right? Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out how to quickly turn the level down so I can talk over it. Okay. So that quickly gives us two oscillators being combined. But in ring modulation, we can actually replace one of those oscillators with a microphone input. Okay. This relates directly back to the Dalek that I was playing at the beginning of class, OK? They, they were using a ring modulator with a microphone input in order to create that effect of the Dalek, OK? So let's leave, I see your hand, is that a quick question? Or? Yeah, are we sending the ring modulation to the output, or are we sending the oscillator? We're sending the ring mod. So this row right here, I'll do this real quick so you can see. So that says ring modulation on that row. So where those two yellows are side by side, see how it says ring modulation there on the side? OK. So that's what we're sending to the output. OK. So then uh, go ahead and pull. Ooh, the, these oscillators are drifting. Pull the green pin. That's going to remove oscillator 2 from the ring modulation. And we want the input, channel 1, which currently has is being sent to the reverb. But let's go ahead and move that pin over to the ring modulator which should be column, right, column F. Yeah, you're right there. Yep, yep. And if I now talk into the microphone, I should be going through the ring modulator. Uh, uh, uh. That's, I misbehave on me. Oh, did I turn, did I turn any of my levels down? Ah, my input level is down. So you can see, can you see the um, input level, uh, no, up on the sources, yeah. Uh, so the bottom of the, 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 yes, you, yeah, you're touching it right there. So go ahead and turn that up for me. Ha, ha. Okay, so now if I start talking into the microphone and while Bree changes the frequency on oscillator one, uh, I am now going to talk in a robot voice. Okay. Uh, what is happening is that my voice is modulating the oscillator and it's producing this overall distortion effect. It doesn't work so well if I talk in a normal voice, but if I start to talk like a pitched voice, it can add a little bit of re uh, roboticness to my voice. Yes? Okay, agreed. So you're starting to see how they achieve those Dalek effects. I don't know any of the kind of famous Dalek lines, basically. I'm not, I'm not that big of a Doctor Who fan, but what's something a Dalek would say, Nadia? What? Exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. Okay. See how we get those effects? Okay. Um, 
You will get the pitch from the other oscillator, though. So you uh, just be aware that you're going to get the original pitch uh, coming through the, uh, the ring modulator as well. It works a little bit better. Wow, I'm over time. Uh, so hang with me. One more thing. It works a little bit better if you route the microphone through the filter first. So if we very quickly, can, let's see, I'm going to call these out to you. E3 is already there. Some of them might already be there. E3. OK, H8. F10. And then the other one should already be there because the ring. Uh, oh, no, excuse me. A13, is that right? A13, yeah, the ring modulator. OK, so what I did with that is I'm actually sending the input first to the filter and then to the ring modulator, which actually cuts out some of the high frequencies in my voice and will further refine. So now if you take this frequency knob, and I should have pointed this out earlier, those letters that I'm calling out for the columns are actually up here on the panel too. So you see how they're in black? Those are the same, and the numbers are as well. Those correspond to the rows and columns down here. So if you're lost as far as what the pin connection is to the panel at the top, those can help you. So now uh, take the frequency there. Modulating my voice by, hello, I am exterminate, right? What is it? What am I supposed to say? I am a Dalek, exterminate the humans, exterminate the humans. Maybe the frequency on the oscillator is a little high, so let's try a little bit lower frequency there. Exterminate the humans, exterminate the humans. It's a matter of, you can fine tune and adjust this basically, uh, but you see how we've got the connections. And you've got the recipe in my notes for today as far as how to, get this, how to get this microphone connected so that you can actually inject your own voice into the synthesizer and start to create kind of robotic processing of your voice, okay? Any questions about that? Okay, thank you very much. Let's give Bria a round of applause, okay.